So welcome to a new section, everyone. Now that we have worked with pivot tables quite a lot, let us look at how Power Pivot works. Now, as you can see on my Excel tab, I have a tab called Power Pivot, which has a few options in it, manage, measures, KPIs, and so on. Now, some of you might not see this tab, not to worry. If you're working on 2013 Office and above, you can simply click on File. At the very end, select Options. Click on Add-ins. Select the second option, which is Com Add-ins, and click on Go. There would be an option here called Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel. And most likely, it would be disabled by default. You simply have to enable it. And the moment you press OK, this tab will appear on your Excel files. Let's understand what Power Pivot is and what it does. So Power Pivot is something uh, which a lot of people consider to be an add-on to pivot tables. They feel that it makes pivot tables more powerful, which is true. But also remember that Power Pivot is much more than simply a more advanced pivot table. Power Pivot uses a language called DAX which stands for Data Analysis Expressions. So if you do a simple Google search, and if you say DAX versus MDX, you can see that there are two different languages. We have DAX and we have MDX. Now, explaining this is beyond the scope of this course, but you can always uh, do a quick Google search. I just go to any website and uh, they will explain this very, very well to you. My recommendation is to go to this website called dax.guide. So this is not the official Microsoft documentation, but it is one of the best reference guides available. So on the left side, you can see a list of all the functions that DAX supports. And if you click on any one of these functions, for example, if I say calculate, you notice it tells you how the arguments work. It gives you some examples as well. Now, remember, there is very little similarity between Excel and Calculate. For example, I'm sorry, between Excel and DAX functions. For example, DAX does not have VLOOKUP. It has something called related. It has something called use relationship. DAX does not have a sum if and a count if. It has something called a sum x and a count x. Right? So you will have to learn this independently in case you have never worked with this earlier. But do remember that DAX is no, used not just by Power Pivot. As you can see, it is used by Excel, which is um, inside Power Pivot. It also works on Microsoft Power BI, works on SQL Server data. It works on Azure. It works on SQL Server analysis services, right? So it's wonderful because you're learning one tool, which will help you with multiple compatibilities. All right, let's understand the problem now. We have uh, three regions, North America, Asia, and Europe. And all these regions have at least two countries. So we have North America with USA, Mexico, Canada, Asia with India and China, and then Europe with Italy and France. And in this table, we have sales for every single country. Obviously, some countries are mentioned more than one. Now, my requirement here is to find out what is the total sales for each of the regions? Now think about it. If you want to find out how much has North America sold, it's very difficult, right? Because you might probably have to do a equal to sum if and then look at North America. So you say that the range is GG. Then you say the criteria is North America. And then you say that the sum range is GG. In fact, my range Oh, I'm confused. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Let me just do that once again. So if you want to find the total, what we'll have to do is, okay, I'll have to say equal to, and then sum if the range would be F in which we are searching for US and the sum range is sales. And as you can see, it gives me the total of all the countries grouped together. But once you have this, then how do you find out the sum of all the regions? Once you've done this, you will have to say equal to sum if the range is column B, the criteria is North America, and the sum range is column D. 
Now we are somewhat getting the result. Like I can, uh, once we've done this, I can simply copy this here and then here, and we do get the result. It's just that this is not really the right way of doing it, no? Because this is a manual approach. It takes you a lot of time and it's very error prone. And imagine tomorrow more records get added. You will again and again have to go back and update these formulas. You can also try to write an index match. So you can say equal to index where we're searching for column B and C. The row number is a match of United States in column C with an exact match. And my return column is column number one. As you can see, it tells me which region all of these countries belong to. And you know, then you can uh, make a filter, apply a sum if. Again, this is not really a short approach. It will take you a lot of time. What we want to do is to use Power Pivot. And for this, we have to use something called a data model. This means we are adding an Excel table from the worksheet to the data model so that multiple Excel tables can all talk to each other. To do this, we will first convert our data set into a table. And let's just call this by a region. We'll convert this into a table as well and we'll call this our sales value. Now we select the first table and in Power Pivot, we add it to the data model. Now, the moment you click on that, a new interface opens up, which is called Power Pivot, which you can see in the top left corner. We don't need to make any change right now. So I'll just close the window. We come back to Excel and we do the same thing with the second table as well. Again, you notice we now have two tables with us. We have region and sales. And now comes the interesting bit. We will select the diagram view and you can see both your tables here. Now we know that country is mapped with country, which is a one to many relationship because in the region table, every country is mentioned one time, which is a unique list. But in the sales table, a country might be mentioned multiple times to create a connection. We can simply drag it and then put it on top of the other table. And if you notice, we have created a one to many relationship. Now, how does this help us? When I go back to Excel and I click on insert pivot table, pivot table, and let's say I create it on the same worksheet. Let's just put it right next to our table, maybe in I2. You will notice that we get a normal pivot table. It is not really showing me anything special. We could just see country and sales. And you might be wondering, but did we not just create a model? We did, but there's a catch. The model will only come when you explicitly tell pivot table that you want the data to be put into the model, which means when we select and insert pivot table and pivot table at the bottom of this dialog box, you notice it says, add this data to the data model, right? So what I'm doing is I'm selecting my table. I click on this option called add this data to the data model. And that did not work. Let me just see if there's anything which is incorrect. Okay, let me just do that once again. So we click on pivot table, pivot table, and we have selected our sales table. We click on add this data to the data model and we press okay. And as you can see this time, we have an active button and we have an all button. And in the all button, you notice both our tables are shown. So we have region and we have sales. And because there is a relationship between both of these tables, I can put region in rows and sales in value and this is great, right? Because I'm able to see the total sales for the three regions, despite the fact that there isn't one table that has my region and my sales value. It is actually between two tables, right? Now, if we did not create the relationship, this is what would happen. So let me go back to Power Pivot and Manage. And in our diagram view, I will simply right click and then delete this. And now let's see what happens. So the pivot can still be created, but you notice that it shows the same number, the total number in all the three cells. So this is the pivot tables way of telling you that while you have created a pivot table using different columns from different tables, there is something missing. And what is missing is the fact that you have not created a relationship. Now it does tell you that it will automatically detect the relationships for you. But my strong, strong advice here is not to click on it. It's highly unreliable. And it's very dangerous because it might create an incorrect relationship. 
So to do this properly, we go back to manage, go to diagram view, and then drag country on top of country. And the moment you do this and you close the window, you notice the pivot table comes back to life. And the best part is that in the future, if more values get added, for example, I say Europe and maybe Germany, and let's say there is a Germany here that has 200 as the sales. Right now it is telling us 2128, but the moment you click on pivot table and refresh it, did you see the number automatically changed? And if I put my country in rows, you can see that Germany has also got picked up. So very, very helpful. Using Power Pivot enables you to connect multiple tables together. So don't feel it only has to be two tables. It can be numerous tables. And uh, you can see all the relationships inside Manage, inside Power Pivot. And it's very easy because you get a diagrammatic view where you can just drag and drop the columns. In the next lecture, we will see how we can expand on Power Pivot. So in addition to creating a relationship, we can also use DAX queries to be able to create calculations within a pivot table.